Hello guys and welcome back to episode number 17 of the Arsenal Crew Mode. Today we are starting off with a game at Ivy Lane which obviously isn't Watford Stadium but we are playing Watford away today. Hopefully looking to pick up some points. They are down in 10th, not doing too badly considering they have come up from the Championship and we are in 5th which is okay at this stage of the season. It's quite interesting, I'd never realised before that um, when a team gets promoted to the Premier League that the you know Premier League overlays and stuff still come up on the screen. Which is pretty cool because I didn't really pay much attention during the Everton career mode that we did to that. But that's pretty cool. You can see the lineup here is a very much weaker lineup. We've got Callum Chambers starting, Loic Perrin, Nacho Monreal, Schneiderlin, Cockwellin, and Miechi, and Bonnie, and Walcott. So pretty much the whole team was a bit of a rotation side due to the fact that after this game we have a Capital One Cup game against Southampton which is a little bit more important than a game against Watford who are most likely going to get relegated back into the Championship at the end of this season or you know finish somewhere near the bottom of the table so it wasn't really worth me playing my full strength side with players like Meza Ozil and um, Sami Kadira Mario Mandzukic, players like that, and also Diego Godin. So, yeah, we do go into this game, and I don't know how Watford managed to miss that chance there. That was incredible. Like, how you managed to put that against the post, I just do not know. But Fia Walcott comes on the wing here, goes in for a run, does a little step over thing, and shoots at the goalie, and comes off the post again at the other end of the field. And they do manage to clear. We come in again with Ryo Maiechi, or Miechi, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. But he gets unfortunate there as well. And we were really pressurising Watford, as you would imagine. Now, how, always, although this is a very much a reserve team, there are still players in there here that are very capable of, you know, dealing out an absolute battering. We do get Wilfred Bonny here into Morgan Schneiderling, and he does put it in to the back of the net to make it 1-0. And what a goal that is by Morgan Schneiderling. A very good signing that we obviously captured from Southampton. And we will be facing his old club in the second game of this episode. Fia Walcott comes in here with a cross. And unfortunately, again, we just couldn't really find that second goal straight away. Which is a bit of a shame. I was expecting to kind of be 2-0 up by this point. And we get another chance of Wilfred Bonny there. And he does put it into the side net. And it goes out and behind for a corner. Uh, a goal kick even, sorry. We do get an injury to Lloyd Perrin. He's out for three weeks, which we'll see confirmation of that at the end of the game. And Bonnie then again gets close and it goes out for another corner with a header. And we cross it back in again, hopefully get trying to get a goal. And unfortunately, it does go and they manage to grab the ball with their striker, who I believe is Troy Deeney. He comes up to goal, crosses it in, and unfortunately, it misses the head of the awaiting striker in the box. And also, Godin misses it, and it goes out for a corner. And Fia Walcott here goes on a very, very nice little run. Look at this. This is why I love Fia Walcott in this game. You can just hold that sprint button down. Just run, run, run. Look at this. Run, run some more. Run some more. Finesse around the keeper. Like, how easy is that? I know that you'll be thinking you're not playing on world class. Honestly, guys, 100% I'm playing on World Class. Every single game that I've played in this career mode, unless I've said otherwise, which I don't think I have, has all been on World Class. And that is just an example of why Theo Walcott in this game is absolutely ridiculous. You should just hold down RT or R2 if you're on PlayStation or R1. I can't remember exactly what it is. Just run and just score with him, pretty much. That's how I do it. But again, Walker gets involved, crosses it in for Bonnie, and Bonnie does put it past the Watford goalkeeper to make it 3-0 and to pretty much seal the game with 12 minutes to go. Very pleased with the performance today from the youngsters that we are fielding today. I mean, I guess Bonnie doesn't count as a youngster, but someone that we don't play in, you know, our everyday team, and he's still proving to be an absolute powerhouse. But Watford do end up scoring a consolation goal in the 82nd minute, putting it past Joe Hart. Very annoyed that he conceded that because although the shot did have a lot of power from Troy Deeney, it was a bit of a one that I would expect him to be saving being one of the better goalkeepers in the league. We do get a free kick here and we give Jack Wilshire the privilege of taking it over Aaron Ramsey. Go for more of a power free kick. He smashes it and I honestly thought that went in. That was very unlucky. A very nice free kick there from Jack Wilshire. Not especially known for his free kicks but that was actually stunning. Hit the post. Very unlucky not to go in. That probably would have been the nicest free kick I've scored this year if that had gone in which was, you know, it was very close. And Wilshire again gets a chance to nearly get himself on the score sheet, but unfortunately it does go past the post and out for a goal kick. We do end up picking up the 3-1 win, nevertheless against Watford, which is very, very satisfying indeed. I really was pleased with that result. Although we, or, to be honest, we could have probably got four or five goals, but to be honest, it's a win and it doesn't matter. You can see there, Loic Perrin is out for three weeks. Winston Reid asked to come into the team, so we did give him a chance today at South, against Southampton at St Mary's. Two away games today. Can we make it two out of two away victories? That would be very nice indeed. You can see Southampton starting lineup there, very much the same lineup that we did play with them in the last episode. I think we actually played them, so pretty much the same lineup that they had then. And obviously a team, as I've said before, a very 
underrated, I would imagine. I would imagine. I would. I think personally, anyway, they are in the top four this season, which is pretty incredible. And if they could get a Champions League spot, that would be fantastic, as long as they don't take it from Arsenal, obviously. But yeah, we are fielding pretty much our strongest team. You know, Sanchez, Özil, Walcott, players like that coming into the team. Although up front, we are going with Danny Welbeck over Mario Mandzukic, just because I want to try and give everyone a fair chance at Arsenal, try and get as many players, as many games as possible, and trying to make everyone happy rather than favouring one player over another. And Welbeck and Mandzukic and Bonnie are all absolutely fantastic strikers, and I'm, I'm really confident using all of them. So it is nice to get them all into the team. You can see here, we do start off this game with Southampton very strong indeed. We do get through and go of Ozil quite a few times. You'll see in these clips that he just gets so many chances to you know put us 1-0 up, and he just, for some reason, cannot finish today. I don't know why. But Southampton, their first real chance of the game, Rodriguez crosses it in Shane Long, and look at that. What a joke. Honestly, it always happens to me as soon as I do well, they got the other end counter attack. You lob across in, and Shane Long does put them one. Like we do try and get straight back into it with Urzel, but again, he just cannot get the goal, the ball past Fraser Forrester in goal, who's pulling off some magnificent saves. Urzel here with a Berber spin goes inside, and how on earth have you not scored that? I just don't know how Urzel was not finishing these chances he was getting given. And Gibbs here tries to lob a ball through the, along the ground to Danny Welber. Unfortunately, the goalkeeper does catch it. Another chance here with Theo Walker goes into the box, goes for a ball roll. Nathaniel Klein brings him down in the area and the referee does point to the spot. And we do get ourselves a penalty. You can see there, a very harsh challenge. He went straight in on Walcott, kind of got him in the crotch as well, which probably would have hurt. And Sanchez steps up to the penalty. Can Alexis put us one? All oh, he does. And again, Alexis proving to come to our rescue. A bit like Arsenal in real life right now. But nevertheless, Sanchez does get the goal from the spot kick. And we do end up levelling up to one. Oh, and Victor Wanyama there almost goes and puts Southampton 2-1 up straight after that penalty. And again, Southampton on the attack here. Shane Long crosses it in. Finds Rowe and Joe Hart. A very good save. A very dodgy save. But, a, you know, a save nonetheless. We now are into the second half. We get a chance here with Danny Welbeck. He manages to go around his man, do a few ball rolls, gets past his other man as well, which was the left-back Ryan Bertrand. Goes for on goal and unfortunately can't put it past Fraser Forrester. Playing out of his skin today and definitely was proving a bit of a tap. But Welbeck there with a lovely little fake shot. Absolutely does the defender. Runs in on goal and one of them shots there is just absolutely fantastic. You get so much power behind that if you slide and then shoot. And that proves why it pretty much always goes in like nine times out of ten on this game. And we do put ourselves. 2-1 up in the Capital One Cup. Obviously, I don't want to be going to extra time in these games. I want to try and get the game sealed. And we do try and do that again with Sanchez coming down the wing there. Does a spin. Fails, but we managed to get it back. Sanchez runs into the box. Tries to pass it to Welbeck, but it ends up at Ramsey's feet. And Ramsey does bury it to make it 3-1 to Arsenal. And what a result this game is. Coming from 1-0 down, and we are now completely in control of this game with 18 minutes to go. And hopefully we can hold on. See that lovely finish. Completely falls Fraser Forrester because the defender was in his way. I think it might have been Nathaniel Clark. And Southampton do try and get themselves back in it here, but we managed to run it off the pitch with Winston Reid, who actually had a fairly good game, and I was glad that he, you know, I chose to play him as he did ask, and he did have a fantastic game, and definitely will be trying to use him more now that Loic Perrin is out with an injury. Southampton almost come close to getting a goal back in the 87th minute, but to be honest, guys, the game was dead, and Welbeck ends up almost putting it past Forrester again. He had a fantastic game, and credit due where it's due. That didn't make sense, but yeah, the credit all goes to Fraser Forrester for keeping Southampton in that and not conceding five or six goals because we did have so many chances, it was absolutely ridiculous. But we do get an offer from Colombia here for an international management, not looking to do that right now unless we do get England come in and Winston Reid thanks us for the opportunity. We sim a game here against Sunderland and we do win 4 0, which is fantastic, and Welbeck wants to play in the next game. Here's the Champions League group. We do have a game against RSC Andalet at the start of next episode. If you have enjoyed this episode, guys, if we could hit five likes as always, that'd be absolutely fantastic. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel there'll be a link down in the description below and i'll speak to you guys in the next episode